When we take care of each other, wonderful things happen. Children thrive, the elderly rejoice, communities celebrate. Awqaf South Africa, a charitable waqaf receiving organization makes it easy to share the care. All donations are plowed into Sharia compliant investments, while the fruits support a great variety of charitable causes. Visit the Awqaf South Africa website at awqafsa.org.za to discover how your waqaf can bless our community with the legacy of care. Awqaf South Africa, share the care. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wa salatu wa salamu ala ashrafil mursaleen. Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa ashabihi ajma'een. Uh, all praise is due to Allah and blessings be upon his noble prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and his pious companions, his friends and associates and companions and his family. Um, a very, very warm welcome to all of you today to this webinar on Waqaf uh, in Nigeria and the unexplored opportunities within the law in Nigeria. It's very, very heartwarming to see so many people that have registered and so many people are attending. Uh, I'm not going to be taking much of your time except to say that uh, we'd like to welcome you on behalf of the, or the host organizations, uh, OCAF South Africa, OCAF Organization of Nigeria, the World OCAF Forum, and also uh, the International Institute of Islamic Waqaf. So, uh, and without much ado, I'm going to introduce you to uh, Brother uh, Zafar Ahmed, who is our Deputy CEO of OCAF South Africa. And he's basically sitting in Durban. I'm sitting in Johannesburg. There we have Hassanain, uh, who's our technical person there. Uh, sitting in Cape Town. Uh, so I'm going to hand over to, uh, to, to Zafar and he's going to be running the program uh, for us. Jazakallah khair and welcome everyone again. Jazakallah, thank you very much, uh, Brother Zeno, for that. Uh, and we also echo the warm welcome to all of our guests and delegates uh, on this uh, wonderful webinar that we're hosting this uh, afternoon, inshallah. All praise belongs to Allah, the especially merciful creator, nourisher, sustainer of the universe, Lord of the worlds, the exceptionally merciful master of the day of judgment, to whom is our ultimate return. Our salutations, durood and salam upon our spiritual master, the best of Allah's creation, the most eloquent in speech, the most perfect in character, the most humble in status, the most dignified in victory, the perfect example for all of mankind and a mercy to all of humanity, our beloved Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Respected guests and uh, delegates, uh, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, and I'm very pleased and delighted to be part of this important seminar and for the support your presence offers uh, this afternoon, inshallah. Uh, very quickly, if I could just spell out a few house rules and take you, give you a quick overview as to how this uh, afternoon's program will will unfold. Uh, we have the session on the Zoom platform, but we're also live streaming on the, the OCAF South Africa Facebook page. So there are some people who will be viewing via that. Uh, at the end of the session, uh, this entire webinar is also being recorded. And so the recordings will be posted on the uh, South Af uh, OCAF South Africa website, inshallah. Now, during the course of the session, uh, People that are on the Zoom platform, you're most welcome to use the Q&A tab to post any questions you'd like uh, to direct towards the panelists. And perhaps towards the end, inshallah, we'll select questions, cluster them uh, around themes, and then uh, direct them to uh, our guests, inshallah. Also, if I could uh, make a humble request to our panelists who are presenting, uh, we have a very tight program, and we'd like to sort of stick to time as best we can, inshallah. So if you could just also respect the time and see how we go through all of this, inshallah. So for the program, uh, we're going to uh, start very shortly uh, with a short kira, inshallah. Uh, and then uh, we'll have a 
our one speaker, and uh, maybe we'll do the Qira first, uh, Hassanain, and then I'll come back to the overview of the program, inshallah. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Laysa al-birra an tuwallu wujuhakum qibala al-mashriq wal-mawrib walakin al-birra man amana billahi wal-yawmil akhir walakin al-birra man amana billahi wal-yawmil akhir wal-malak والكتاب والنبيين وآت المال وآت المال على حبه ذوي القربى واليتامى والمساكين وابن السبيل والسائلين وفي الرقاب والسائلين وفي الرقاب الصلاه واتى الزكاه والموفون بعهدهم اذا عاهدوا والموفون بعهدهم اذا عاهدوا والصابرين في الباساء والضراء وحين الباس اولى Sadaqallahu al azim Jazakallah, thank you very much for that, uh, Brother Asnin. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, so the program overview very quickly. We'll have the keynote speaker, Dr. Abdullahi Ishola, who will do a 15 minute address, inshallah. That will be followed by a uh, panelist or two, two uh, short presentations by Dr. Imam Abdullah Yishoi and Dr. Muhammad Lawal Madoiki, inshallah. Uh, we'll have uh, comments from Dr. Ibrahim Muhammad and Dr. Umar Hafiz, inshallah. And then we'll end off with about 30 minutes of Q&A. As I said, questions can be posted in the Q&A tab on the Zoom. Or for those of you that are on Facebook, you can post questions through there. That will be fed through to me, and we'll try and take that at the end, inshallah. So it gives me great pleasure to introduce or to ask Dr. Abdul Kabir to kindly do an introduction for our keynote speaker, Dr. Abdullahi Ishola, inshallah. Alhamdulillah, uh, Rashidun, Rajim, Bismillah, Rahman, Rahim. I deeply welcome all of you to this program. We thank Almighty Allah who gives us opportunity to arrange the program and the start. Inshallah, I'm going to introduce our honorable speaker, Dr. Abdullah Isola Sole. Uh, Dr. Abdullah Isola Sole was born to the popular family in Kankwa area, Ukilili, Okwara State in Nigeria. Dr. Isola, Bab is Bachelor of Law degree LLB in Sharia and Common Law from University of Ilone, where he won two Presidential Senate Awards as the best overall graduating student from the Islamic Law Department and Public Law Department in 2015. His master's degree LLM in Islamic Law was also from the same University of Ilone, Nigeria in 2011. Also, our honorable speaker, Dr. Abdullah Isoli Usola, he obtained his PhD in law from the International Islamic University, Malaysia, where he researched on cash work with focus on corporate, tactical, and cooperative models in September 2015 to May 2018. Professionally, Dr. Isola is a barrister and solicitor of the Supreme Court of Nigeria and registered 
teacher with the Teachers Registration Council of Nigeria. Notably, Dr. Isola is the founder and Piona President, Chief Executive, of, uh, CEO of Takaful Multipurpose Cooperative Society Limited in Iloi in Nigeria. Also, he is gainful employed as a lecturer at the Department of Islamic Law Faculty of Law Clara State University, Maliti, in Nigeria, where he was former head of the department, HOD, from the August 2019 to August 2020. Shortly, this is the uh, briefly introduced of our honorable speaker, Dr. Isola. Thank you all, and I welcome you all to this program. May Allah reward us. Wassalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Dr. Ishola, we'd like to invite you to uh, present your paper this afternoon. Chazakallah. Rahim. Alhamdulillah. Wa salatu wa salam ala Rasulullah. All praises and adorations are due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We thank him for giving us this opportunity to have this uh, unique uh, chance to deliberate on one of the important uh, issues in uh, Islamic law in the uh, global Islamic uh, world. So my appreciation to the organizers and uh, I acknowledge and thank uh, Dr. Abdul Kabir Adelani, who facilitated my being uh, invited as uh, a guest speaker today. As we are all aware, my presentation is uh, on uh, Wakfu in Nigeria and the unexplored uh, uh, opportunities within the law. Inshallah, I will try to stick to time. And for that reason, I may need to skip some of the uh, outline here. But generally, what I have in my presentation is as follows. The uh, brief introduction, then I'll talk about uh, the connotation of Wakfu within the Nigerian law. Then uh, I'll look at the relevant uh, legal tools on Wakfu in Nigeria. Then there are some very cogent uh, issues which uh, we need to draw our attention to as regards the current uh, work food practice system in the country. Then thereafter, we we'll go to the main uh, focus of our discussion this uh, morning in Nigeria here. So, which is the opportunity that has not been uh, explored. And on that note, I'm going to uh, make some recommendations before, before I make uh, my conclusion. Now, just for those uh, who may not know, because uh, for the past few days, some people have been asking me, what is this uh, work pool about? And this also justifies the significance of this uh, event. For those who may not know, work pool simply means Islamic endowment. And the way we can understand this is uh, when we draw our attention to the popular hadith of the Prophet Wasallam, where he mentioned that uh, when a man dies, all his uh, action activities will come to an end, they will not benefit him any longer, except in three circumstances. And one of those uh, three circumstances is what is called Sodafa to Jaria, that is the ongoing Sodafa charity. So that is where the scholars of Islam have developed the concept of uh, Wakfu. So simply, when one has a property and you want to make it available, you want to surrender its uh, ownership, and you not specify that uh, whatever benefit that we derive from such property should go to certain set of people. It may be for students, for widows, for orphans, for even the larger community like constructing road, building uh, accommodation for travelers and uh, all that. So once you do that, that is what is called a uh, workflow in uh, Islamic law. 
And this can also be understood when we understand what is called a trust in the English uh, common law. So now we are aware that uh, many affluent Nigerian Muslims engage in a charity as philanthropists. They register foundations, but this foundation, when we look at it, it as Muslims, the benefit that may, they may want to derive from it may not eventually be achieved. And this is the significance of this uh, presentation. So for that reason, those who have been doing this may need to understand the difference between trust and uh, workful. There are a lot of differences. And one major one that I'll just briefly talk about here because of time is the, the posthumous uh, objectives between the trust and uh, workful. For the trust, usually what they do is say, OK, when I die, let people continue to remember me that uh, I've done a uh, good deed for humanity. But for the fight, I mean, for workful, it goes beyond this because whoever the donor, the workful donor, uh, intends to continue to earn reward from Allah. And that is why, in terms of purposes, they are also different. Trust is merely a charity that the donor we want to continue to benefit, which may not have that intention of uh, worshiping Allah. But that, this is not the case uh, with uh, uh, workful. So this is also very important. So when we look at the situation of things in Nigeria, we understand that uh, many people are still not aware and they don't understand what WAKFU is. And this has been undermining its growth. Even though it has a lot of uh, potentials, even to the economy, social, religious, and in many senses. So for this reason, uh, this presentation becomes very, very, very significant that uh, even the government should have some interest in what we are doing here today, inshallah. Now, in Nigeria, we are a Maliki Madhab uh, country. Our Islamic law is premised primarily on the uh, Islamic, uh, I mean, uh, the Maliki school. So for that reason, we, if we want to understand the system of work in Nigeria, we focus much more on uh, the principles as laid out by the uh, Maliki school. I also want to skip this because of uh, the time uh, constraint. But one important thing that uh, I need to emphasize here is the fact that uh, where does the legislative power on workful lies in Nigeria? It lies on the state. In the country, as a federal uh, uh, country, we have uh, exclusive legislative power, concurrent and uh, residual. The residual legislative power is where only the state government has absolute uh, exclusive legislative power. And this is where the work will fall. And this will take me to a lot of issues that we, we have to raise in the way that the uh, work has been uh, handled in the country so far. So when we look at the laws that are relevant to the work in the country, we need to identify the constitution uh, the Islamic law, the Maliki Mazda, like I said, then we have some state enactment on endowment, workful law, then we have Sharia Court of Appeal. But we need to know that uh, except for the federal capital territory, where the National Assembly exercises power in making law for them like a state, every other matter that relates to workful fall outside the purview of the legislative power of the federal government. And this will now raise the question of whether the subjugation of WAPU to some federal legislative uh, laws, as well as uh, regulators, is uh, appropriate. And this is uh, the discretion in the country when we look at the current approaches to WAPU practice uh, in the country in terms of this administration and establishment. So I've been able to identify that uh, in the country, we have three main approaches to WAPU practice, public approach, then private approach, as well as a public-private uh, approach. This point is very, very important to our discussion uh, uh, today, because under the public approach, we have states establishing workful properties, as well as establishing uh, workful administrators as a mutawali, so much that even the private person that also establish a workful are also allowed to bring that workful under the management of such a uh, administrators. Then under the private uh, section, the approach that has been adopted is that individual will register 
with a federal government agency that is known as a Corporate Affairs uh, Commission. So all these things raise a lot of issues which I'm going to identify shortly. Then we have also identified some other practice where if a government will register uh, an IT, that is a corporated trustee for the purpose of managing the workflow. But this has been uh, uh, a kind of uh, uh, corrected in a way which it, it is no longer involved. Now, we have uh, some private corporate administrator that uh, can be identified. I can see Jai, we have the NASFAT, we have uh, Sadia Workflow Foundation in Kano. This is all of them. They were registered with the federal government agency, which is Corporate Affairs Commission. So this is a justification to show the approach that has been adopted in a workflow practice uh, in the country. Then we have to raise uh, this uh, issues. One, now between the state being workflow administrators and uh, being workflow regulator, Motawali, which is the approach that has been adopted in a public, uh, uh, I mean, public uh, approach that has been adopted, is it only that the state should be workflow administrators or should be workflow regulators? As it is now in the country, we don't have workflow regulators because all over the state, what we have is uh, the government agency at the state level that we have are workflow administrators. Like we have in Sokoto, we have in Sampara, we have in Niger State, and all, most of the 12 uh, Sharia states in the country. So this is a very important issue. If we really want to explore the opportunities which the law has given to us, we have to rethink in managing that how do we want to come up with workflow regulators as against uh, just focusing on the uh, workflow administrators under the government uh, uh, establishment. Then the issue of uh, subjugation of workflow to federal legis legislative regulation. Like I've noted, those uh, uh, private, uh, corp uh, private uh, corporate workflow administrators, as I've identified, all of them were registered with the CAC. Can this be very, very helpful in promoting the workflow in the country? So this is an issue that we all have to look into. Then the third one that should also be of concern to us that we undermine the exploration of the potentials of workflow is the issue of legality of a trustees institution. We have banks and other companies that have established trustees under the Trust Act, which is a federal legislature, I mean a federal enactment. And also trust is based on the principles of a common law. And here we are talking of an Islamic endowment, which is regulated by Islamic law. How come and what is the justification for the involvement of all these trustees in the Islamic endowment workflow? I think the blame may not be so much placed at their doorstep because we that we are supposed to take things uh, uh, to be in control are not doing so much well because we have neglected that aspect and they see that there is need for it. We have many Muslims who need to have a, a appropriate uh, legally sanctioned and registered a body to manage their, their workflow for them. So in that regard, I want to uh, identify some other issues which time uh, will not uh, permit me to discuss. But let me now identify the opportunities that we may need to focus on. One of them is the legislative status exploration opportunity. That what falls within the exclusive legislative power of the state government is a very good advantage. That state government should know that they are the ones that are in control of what and they should take appropriate steps. Just like the federal government has established corporate affairs commission, so the states should also look at the way they can establish a regulatory body for what rather than just focusing on uh, administration uh, aspect of it. There, there will be a lot of uh, opportunity for banks as the conventional, I mean, the non-interest-based I mean, banks establish trustees. Our uh, non-interest-based banks can also explore workflow by establishing workflow fund uh, managers, not just as uh, administrators, but as a, a kind of a business uh, outlet which uh, the time will not permit me to explain how such a model can, uh, can, can be designed. Then there are a lot of uh, career opportunities also. 
Like uh, there's need for us to develop work food practitioner and professional that can be advising interested uh, the work food donors, the working. We don't have this. And people will be complaining that uh, maybe there are no opportunities in Islamic law. This is a very viable area that can be explored. So much that we can develop a work with entrepreneurship, such as consultancy, administration, management, research, training, and opportunity. Just as uh, we have people establishing schools for other training, the focus now is on Islamic finance, which uh, in a way, work will also fall part of, but there's need for focus on specific institution that will be training manpower in their workforce because a lot of opportunity in this and the law has really supported this. Then there is also opportunity for our Islamic cooperative society to integrate workforce into their practices by flowing their internal workforce fund as well as uh, even establishing means by which they can become workforce uh, managers. So uh, all these opportunities are there and there's no legal constraint for us to uh, explore them. Then uh, there's also opportunity for corporate from commercial approach to, uh, in, I mean, uh, implementation of work food. Then I also want to emphasize that there is time has now come for us to shift from sadaka and hard begging approach to the needy. For instance, we have a lot of uh, Islamic organizations in the country that each time when somebody gets sick, they'll be going around calling for people to come and uh, uh, donate to them. How long do we want to continue this? Instead of that, if they have their work full that people have uh, subscribed to, so that one will now be uh, something that they can rely on instead of coming from time to time to ask people for uh, harms uh, and uh, begging here and there. So I want to make the following recommendations. One, I propose that the state government should establish work full regu regulatory bodies to be called work full commission which will be nursing work food. As it is now, the various work food bodies that we have across the state, to me, they are work food uh, mutawali. They are just work food administrators. But we need work food commission. And the way we can understand this is the way the CAC, Corporate Affairs Commission, handles matters that are vested within its jurisdiction by the federal government. So we can go this way to also promote work food when we have a work food commission. So such a work food regulator, we registered work food managers and we also accredit a work food practitioner. So that we will know that people now take work food to be a very serious and beneficial uh, sector that can be promoted and people can uh, even go into in terms of study and uh, also uh, practice. Then I also propose for review and reform of a cooperative society laws towards integration of workforce services into the cooperative services. So in this wise, we will uh, such a workforce commission, we accredit cooperative as a workforce manager. Then uh, I propose for establishment of institute of workforce studies. Like uh, across the near and across the state, we have Institute of Cooperative Studies. So state government should not just stop at uh, establishing work to commission, work to administrators, but it's also established institutes of work to studies. And individual corporates can also do this so that we have the necessary advancement and promotion uh, for work to. Then more importantly, I propose for state to enact work food and allied matters law, which I call one law, as different from the work food, I mean, uh, the laws that has been, uh, that have been established for work food administrators. Like I said, various work food uh, bodies that we have across the state, in Zamfara, in Sokoto, and all across the state, even in uh, Kano State, they are work food administrators, but we need workful regulators and there is need for a specific law to be to establish this so that each state can have a state a workful commission then uh it must be mentioned loud and clear that trustees companies should desist from dabbling into workful under the guise of managing endowment and estate plan planning for muslims it is not within their uh, power they are registered under the trust act and it will be illegal for them to double into Islamic endowment. If they want to register and incorporate Islamic endowment 
into the activities, they have to register under the state because that is within the purview of the legislative power of the of the state. So finally, uh, by way of conclusion, I believe there is a bright future for Wakfu in Nigeria. And the law has created good avenues for exploration of the Wakfu potentials for knowledge, economic, entrepreneurship, and empowerment opportunity uh, to the benefit of uh, all. So the legislative power of the state presents a great potential for Wakfu to the benefit of all and sundry, and better than, even better than as close as been explored by the federal government. So the concern of the state government would be that if we now double into this uh, sector of Wakfu, are we not going to just be spending on it? No, the state also stand to generate revenue, huge amount of uh, revenue that we, is equally not uh, impact negatively on the Wakfu uh, system. So my conclusion is that inshallah Wakfu is indeed being on the floor for the betterment of all Nigerians, even though a wide opportunity has been created by the law for its exploration. So I recommend that the state should have a rethink on our Wakfu system and practice in the country so that we can have a better Wakfu sector in the country. I thank you all. Jazakallah. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Abdullah Ishola, for keeping to time as well as in the limited time, so clearly articulating the situation uh, in Nigeria and putting it across in terms of uh, what the situation on the ground is and uh, very thoughtful recommendations that you make as well. Alhamdulillah, I think it makes for a very, very interesting uh, presentation. And we look forward to some of the questions that may uh, flow out of that, inshallah. Jazakallah, thank you very much for that comprehensive presentation. Uh, Dr. Abdul Kabir, I wonder if you could come back and introduce our next uh, panelist, Dr. Imam Abdullah Ishway, uh, who has five minutes to also make a contribution uh, over and above Dr. Ishula. Dr. Kabir? I think Dr. Kabir has left us. Oh, all right. So uh, maybe I'll do that quick introduction. Uh, our next panelist is uh, Dr. Abdullahi Shuebi, who is the Chief Executive Officer of the Jais Foundation in Nigeria. He holds a BSc as well as a Master's and a PhD, mashallah. Uh, he, is also the, he was also the adjunct lecturer at the Al Ansaruddin College of Education. Uh, and it gives me great pleasure now uh, to invite uh, Abdullah Shoaib for five minutes to give us some of his thoughts uh, about Dr. Isola's presentation as well as anything else he'd like to talk about, uh, about the Nigeria situation. Thank you very much, uh, Sheikh Mohammed Zafar Ahmad for giving me the floor. Uh, to all the distinguished uh, participants and organizers, I say assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Uh, let me start by first commending the effort of uh, Dr. Abdullah Ishala for that very insightful and resourceful presentation. Uh, I'm sure if time was on the side, you would have gave more into some analytical you know, explanations. May Allah bless what you have given us this morning. And notwithstanding some of the shortcomings uh, in, the, in the Federal Republic of Nigerian Constitution of 1999 as amended, which our has gone into some aspect of it, uh, as well as some of the, the you know, absence of a robust legal framework for the management and regulation of the workforce in the country. I'm still of the opinion that uh, there are lots of opportunities that are still abound that are yet to be taught, especially looking at the growing awareness of workful based institutions or Sharia compliant workful institutions in Nigeria. Cash workful is one of the unexplored opportunities of the new financial products in modern day Islamic finance institutions especially you know, using it as a model for finance and development. So I'm going to, in my own little short you know, contribution I'm going to make, without taking anything out of what Dr. Abdullah Shola has given us, 
I'm just going to look at the issue from the practitioner point of view. And I'm going to cite two case studies, one outside the country, which can be replicated in Nigeria, and then the other one is a case study currently going on in Nigeria. The first case study is that of Ka, that is King Abdul Aziz, who you know, work for in Saudi Arabia. And then the second one I'm going to use is the JICE Charity and Development Foundation, JTI, you know, work. Looking at these, you know, case studies, uh, especially with the first one I'm going to look at, which is the King Abdul Aziz, you know, work for in Saudi Arabia. It is a hybrid. It is a hybrid form of work, for, which is called work for Suku. And this is one of the most important financial mechanisms for socioeconomic development that's yet to be exploited under cash in, in workflow in Nigeria, which currently is begging for attention. For example, you know, in Nigeria in the last you know, three years or so, the Federal Republic of you know, the Federal Republic, the government of the Federal Republic of Nigeria has witnessed three tranches of uh, Soko. The first one was in 2017. The second one was in 2018, and the recent one is in 2020. And all these tranches were oversubscribed, telling us that there is a future for the development of Islamic finance using some of these instruments. Now let me break it down. Looking at the Wakfu Sukuk, which is currently one of the most efficacious, one of the most vibrant and successful case study in Saudi Arabia. In Nigeria, for example, Alhamdulillah, at least for today, we have two full-fledged Islamic bank, which we call non-interest banking in Nigeria. We have the Jais Bank, we have the Taj Bank. And I'm very sure maybe in the nearest future or immediate future, many more will come on board without any prejudice to some of the banks that have windows for Islamic finance. My own position is that if we can have a consortium of these Islamic banks or Sharia-based compliance institutions coming together you know, to float what we call a sovereign, I mean, you know, float what we call a corporate sukuk. Because we have never had corporate sukuk in Nigeria. All the one we've had so far are sovereign sukuk, which was given by the federal government. I think uh, Abdullahi Shuaib has frozen there. Maybe uh, Zephyr, you want to take over again? Okay, I think there seems to be a technical problem on his side, inshallah. Um, Would you like to move on to the next item there with uh, Sheikh Mohammed Madoki? Yeah, okay. So uh, let me introduce our next speaker, inshallah. And uh, when uh, Sheikh is able to join us again. Uh, we'll give him a few minutes to finish off his presentation. It gives me great pleasure to introduce uh, Dr. Muhammad Lawal Madoki, who is the CEO of the Sokoto State Zakah and Welfare Commission, also Vice President and Board of Trustees for Global Zakah Union, mashallah. I invite him now to, uh, to a brief presentation. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم رب شرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وخلوا الأقدة من لساني يبقوا قولي uh, Brother Moderator, other distinguished uh, brothers and sisters on board Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh uh, We from Sokoto State Zakat and Endowment uh, Work Commission We are glad to be invited to join this uh, very important discussion with respect to the unexplored opportunity within the law uh, with regards to work up in Nigeria. Well, uh, my brother, uh, Shola, whom we, I, 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 I was so keen to listen to him and uh, uh, really it will end up on us being inviting him to come to Sokoto. Right now in this very office of mine and together with our legal advisor and uh, some of our staff and some of our consultants, 
watching you over the television this very important uh, uh, discussion that is happening for the first time. I would also want to use this opportunity to remind all of us that uh, there are already exist in Nigeria, the Association for Zakat and Workup Practitioners, which I happen to be the pro tem chair and uh, Dr. Allah Shuaibu is the deputy uh, 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 chairman, while Dr. Ali Fahir from Bahiru University, Kano, is the secretary. We have really gone far discussing with the top leadership of the Muslim Ummah uh, in Nigeria, that is His Eminent the Sultan and also the Supreme Council for Islamic Affairs, and the Jamaat Islam and the entire traditional institutions in the country. Now, that will be for another day discussion, but I think what our brother has already been able to identify, which we have all agreed with him that work of in, uh, is recognized in the Nigerian constitution. And secondly, there are so many laws in the state which he has excellently been able to portray to a large extent. And uh, even though uh, it is not uh, all that comprehensively enough, uh, even from the advices he has given and issues he has raised, it uh, underscored that there is still the need to do more in, in, in that section. But Alhamdulillah, for us to have reached this far from the time we have started discussing about this issue of uh, you know, work, uh, I think uh, it is a good uh, uh, you know, step. I mean, a very, uh, what I can uh, uh, term as a, as a progress, as a positive de development in Nigeria. I can remember meeting Brother Zain in, in Indonesia and we have uh, discussed with him severally on that issue. Really, he has a very big dream for the work of uh, issues in Nigeria, which I also uh, I join him in that. But the only problem is that we only wake up very, very lately with respect to these issues of the management and unlocking the opportunities of work of in Nigeria, but so far so good. With some of the graduates we have from Malaysia, some of the graduates we have from Indonesia, some we have from Bayer University, some other university, and some other institutions like ABU. I, I think what is happening these days in Nigeria is really a welcome development. And uh, by good grace, we will also look at other avenues to see how we can move faster, especially uh, employing the digital, you know, you know, the technology uh, these days that it will help to facilitate. In fact, courtesy of that is why we're having this webinar. Otherwise, we'll have to wait until when the corona is all over. Maybe it may take another year before we could see our faces. So in accordance with the law, the all, what only matters now is to prioritize. Most of uh, work of administrators, as he mentioned, are, are, are work and zakat put together in Nigeria. Whether it is traditional type, whether it is government type, whether it is individual type, if it is not individual type, sometimes it is work and sadaka is put together. So that as time goes, we may be able to separate. If you go to some other countries like South Africa, the Sandab is there and the Aukafsa is there. If you go to Indonesia, Baden Waqf is there, while uh, Basnas is there, many others. So gradually we shall move to that. And I hope we will do that very fast so that we'll be able to harness the you know unlock opportunity and tap the unlock opportunities of work up in building the society because even the Nigerian government, in my own opinion, we need higher level advocacy for those in government, whether at federal or at the state, to understand the importance of work or endowment in the development of society. If they say they don't understand what is work up, we try to borrow the word endowment because we even give them some examples of some endowment activities in the Europe, in America, which they have done in a similar uh, form of, uh, of work, of, and they have benefited from it, and they are benefited up to now. So, and their future generation will also benefit. So we also look at the issue of public awareness. There is a need for public awareness, which it has to be well-coordinated, well-organized, and then also there is a need to look at the harnessing of the potentially, you know, uh, technologies we have around, especially the social media, the fintech issue, because our speaker has done work on cash worker, which we are now accepting because Maliki School of Thought had already accepted cash worker, while others did not. But today, I think everybody can understand. So probably what we may need very soon is uh, to also have a vehicle, to establish a vehicle in Nigeria that will help, uh, as I know, in the training and the propagating of worker. Uh, because, even the organization like where I am administering, 
if you if you dig, I don't know of any place with a single certificate of work or a single diploma in work or a degree in work. Somebody may conduct a project or do his master's thesis on work. Yes, true. You get them, but how many are they? And where are they? So I think that's the collaboration we need. And we can start from little and then we will grow bigger. Like South Africa, theirs has become very strong. And I think if they can join hand with us in Nigeria, we can start. And then we put all the uh, minds in Nigeria together and then we move. One thing I can be rest assured that the leadership of the Muslim Ummah in Nigeria, who is the Sultan, he will be much ready, ever ready to support. Because there was once a day he asked me if it is possible he want to present a, a motion in, 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 the, in the National Assembly for all the Muslims to, to have given zakat out of their wealth as a law. And for those who want to do work, they do it. So there are a lot of things to do which we really welcome you. There are other small opportunities, like even though our people are poor, yes, to a large extent, they are living, uh, a greater percentage is living below the poverty line. But there are opportunities like the three work up. The three work up, which able almost house the poor, the perma can do. And one person you can sponsor, one three work up, two three work up, three three work up. And that will also help, and it will have a sustainable growth and development within the society. I think the five minutes allocated to me is over. We can discuss more and more, but inshallah, very soon we invite Shola to come to Sokotria and we look forward to see Zain, uh, brother Zain uh, coming from South Africa down here. Maybe this is the beginning and uh, we really have to move as fast as we can. And the reward is from Allah. Salam alaikum. Shukran, Jazeelan, uh, Dr. Maiduki. Thank you very much very much for that presentation I'm not a doctor, I'm only a student. and for the work you do there mashallah <laughs> inshallah mashallah uh, it gives me great pleasure now to um, invite our respected brother dr umar hafiz inshallah if you could unmute him and allow him to say a few words mashallah just also to let you know that uh, dr umar hafiz is the founder and president of the world oka forum which was established about two years ago, uh, based in Switzerland. And its uh, main objective is to get, especially uh, in those countries where there, there are Muslim minorities and also big Muslim communities to actually uh, mobilize and, and to grow the whole work of sector. So uh, we'd really like to welcome uh, Dr. Umar Hafiz as well. Thank you, uh, Brother Zainul Abidin. I am very happy and honored by being uh, with you this uh, afternoon as Mecca time here. Uh, the, our brothers from Nigeria knows me because I was in charge of following uh, their application for IDB to participate in Jais Bank. And I am very happy that, alhamdulillah, Jais Bank now is a well-known project and performing well in Nigeria. We are very close, uh, our heart with them and praying for them always. The issue of waqf and zakah has been discussed now by our colleagues and panelists. I would like just to, time is very limited, but I want to, to refer to the first recommendation of Dr. Abdullahi about the legislation and legal issues of Awqaf. And then I connect this with the brothers who said the uh, regulations are there, and it is Zakah and Waqf. I want just to attract their attention to the issue that Zakah nature of revenues are very different than Awqaf. And it is better that you have one institution for awqaf and the other one for zakah. Very different nature of management and the collection, and it's very different. So I believe uh, to uh, push for this uh, good movement of having some legislations for awqaf, it should be unique, not related to zakah. Zakah should go another another good way. So I am praying very much for them to have uh, this development, but to be sure that Awqaf is a civil society 
civil society activities. The government should be very limited uh, helping them. Just maybe uh, some regulations, but not to be as another, as mentioned by Abdullahi, brother Abdullahi. It is not good to have the government institution nazar of awqaf. This will not promote the awqaf, uh, uh, awqaf business in in Nigeria. So this is the just uh, shortly I can uh, say something, but I hope that we have uh, more time in the future to talk with, to all of them and uh, be with them and helping with all whatever we can do. Thank you, Brother Daniel Abdin, very much. Barakallahu <laughs> feek. Jazakallahu khair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Thank you very much for those uh, contributions, uh, Dr. Omar Hafiz, mashallah. Many the time well so far. Uh, so we have a few minutes to about 20 minutes or so, inshallah, 25 minutes to take some questions that have been posted. So I'm going to go through some of them that are posted on the Q&A chat here and some others that will be sent to me via the Facebook on another document. Maybe I'll start with uh, a question to Dr. Uh, Dr. Muhammad Lawal. Uh, what's the size of the work of under your management and what kind of projects do you support with the proceeds of your workups? We have just started not very uh, uh, you know, far. We have gone on the uh, uh, issue of work. We have uh, uh, collectively issue of land, issue of uh, some structures like houses. And then we are yet to have some immovable workups uh, going around generating funds. But uh, put together as at now is uh, more than 500 uh, uh, million millionaire. But what we are now mostly propagating being uh, dealing with uh, the states, uh, I mean, uh, more, more than 80 percent are agrarian. So we are now trying to propagate the issue of uh, tree workout, which we believe very soon will be uh, able to help. Uh, many of the Sokoto state indigenous, which the population is about 5.7 uh, uh, million out of poverty. Uh, we believe also the value chain of the three work up that include dates, uh, cashew nuts, and then the moringa, this uh, and tamarind. Uh, these are some of the crops that do very well here. And some of them fruit uh, almost two times here in, 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 in Sokoto state. So as part of the work, we are trying to see the smallest person in the village should uh, afford to do this because he has the land, he has the water, he has other resources that it takes to grow a date, a, 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 a date farm. So by God's grace, with the varieties we have around which we are sourcing uh, from different uh, angles, uh, we feel uh, by the uh, 2025, the poverty rate in Sokoto State will be reduced by 25% uh, through this uh, single effort of the uh, Devino uh, work up or, or, or debt farm work up initiative. These are some of the things that we are really busy, busy doing. If any one of you followed our Facebook or our website or our WhatsApp group, he will see a lot of work that we are doing uh, these days. We have not gone very far, but honestly, the dream is to go into billions of uh, Naira worth work up. Uh, 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 having return of investment that could also cater for other needs in the society and the activities of the work of organization itself. Thank you. Jazakallah. Thank you very much for that. Dr. Ishola, I have a question directed to you. Uh, you mentioned that there are three categories of work in Nigeria, uh, the government, well, the state control, the private, and then a cooperation between the both. Uh, if you could collaborate on that and also give us an indication of the value or the size of each of these workups in these three sectors. Alhamdulillah. Can you hear me? Gee, go ahead. Okay. The... Three practices, uh, like I mentioned, 
The common one, the traditional one is the private. At the private levels, may, many people do work food that may not even be known to anybody. So uh, sometime in uh, December, 2019, I was in Qatar for a conference on a workshop, and there we work on a, uh, the data on the workflow in Nigeria. We, I, we are able to identify that one of the problems of workflow, and that is why I've recommended that we need an institute, is that we have the problem of uh, data that we cannot even quantify give appropriate data. So data workflow survey is even another area that uh, needs to be focused on. Because if you don't have that uh, data, is uh, it creates the problem, part of the problem that uh, we are facing now. So for now, we don't have a specific data on the world of workflow in the country, because majorly they are at the private level except recently that uh, the corporate approach to the uh, administration of a workflow like uh, those have identified as a uh, notable public uh, workflow administrators. Uh, it is now that we can say that uh, we can get some data from those other corporate uh, administrators, but uh, to have a general data and the value of the workflow in the country for now is still a major problem. And it's also one of the areas that even whoever wants to go into research can double into to engage in the survey of a workflow in the country. Chazakallah, while I have you, Dr. Ishola, there's a related question uh, from uh, Brother Ghazali. Uh, Wakaf is being written into the Nigerian constitution. Are there any legal implications? Yes, uh, the legal implication is positive because uh, it gives a kind of a uh, highest level of legal recognition to work for in the country. And that is why in my presentation, I've identified the relevant section of the constitution that talks about uh, the work for being uh, an item under Islamic uh, personal law. So the implication is positive because uh, nobody can query the legality of a workflow in the country because the IS law, which is the constitution, has even given a, a recognition to it. Thank you very much. Uh, there's a question perhaps, uh, Dr. Shoaib. Uh, how does the government workers generate their funds? The question is better, you know, directed to maybe Malam Lawam Medoki, because I work from the private, you know, sector angle. So, but those who are in the government sector will be in the better position to maybe, you know, put some answers to the question. So I don't want to, you know, to say Madoki, something that's speculative. Dr. Madoki, if you want to try and answer that question. You see, we are really, the constitution has recognized work and uh, as said by Brother Shola, um, many states have also uh, domesticated such laws. But it's not like in Senegal. In Senegal, you have a whole complete ministry of Aukaf. But in Nigeria, you don't have at the federal level. So of course, it is positive as he has said, but sometimes you may have some other issues to settle with. Because he has rightly said that work are being done without being recorded. And where we came from, the history is that Nigerians think work up is only on madrasa, on mosque, on cemeteries, and then, you know, some of those things are the only work up. The issue of work up in building road, work up in building bridges, work up in building estate, work up in building market, work up in building plaza, these are new things that sometimes you have to repair them to Makka Clock Tower Hotel where it is written work up for the uh, holy mosques, then they will now remember, how can a Muslim have an hotel as work up? This is where we, are, we come from. We are trying to awaken them, but there are thousands and millions of work that are not recorded. But the issue is the Nigerian law, and most of the uh, houses of assemblies, 
especially where the Muslims are a minority, they are not going to form any stumbling block in making laws that will assist in the management of work. So uh, truly, there is more positive, as the speaker said. I agree with him, rather than the negative. So Shukran, Jazakallah. Thank you very much. Yeah. Uh, there's yeah. a question directly uh, addressed to Dr. Uh, Shoy. How do you think? Uh, how do you think we can mainstream work of into financing for financial inclusion and economic empowerment? Thank you very much. Um, I also agree with my other colleagues who have spoken that the potentials are there. Fortunately for us, with the existence of a full-fledged non-interest bank in Nigeria, I think um, the Nigerian Muslim community uh, should not be lamenting again because the opportunities are there. Uh, let me just give an example of my own organization, that is the which is a child of Jai's Bank. It was created by Jai's Bank. That is Jai's Charity and Development Foundation. Um, under this uh, foundation, we have been able to identify two or three major areas of fund generations. Number one, you know, the Muslim population is a very potential, you know, source of fund generating. If the organization has credibility, and it has integrity in terms of their corporate governance. If they have a very high standard of corporate governance where there is transparency and there is accountability, you know, a lot of Muslims, well to do Muslims and corporate citizens of Nigeria will be willing, you know, to provide support for them. And I will give an example. Number two is that there's also, you know, the Islamic bank that we have today. They have several windows of non-permissible you know, income that comes to the bank. These incomes are not meant to be spent by the banks. They are not meant to be, you know, even, you know, you know taking goodwill for them because the bank did not end them. But part of the Sharia of the operation of the bank, such incomes should be, you know, dedicated, you know, for charities, for charity purpose. So my organization, for example, also have access to such, you know, from the banks. And I can tell you that from the existence of the foundation to date, that is from 2017 to date, under the you know, cash workflow, we have been able to institutionalize three corporate workflow. Number one, we have been able to put in place what we call, you know, Jai Stakafu. Jai Stakafu is a child created by the Jai Foundation to, you know, put into judicious useful the non-permissible income that accrue from the bank. And um, we, you know, we, we use it to establish this corporate workflow for the sustainability of the activities you know, of the foundation, and then again to open up the space for interventions in education, in health, in you know, you know, you know, livelihood, economic empowerment of the poor people, amongst other. The second one we, which we also did was also you know, to use funds that, we can, that were generated from Sadako, along with the non-permissible income, to establish what we call LGI's Investment and Services Limited. These particular you know, establishments also operate under corporate workflow of foundation. And their primary purpose is to be able to provide support services to several you know, companies, several organizations, and profit generated from such organizations are being used you know, to provide interventions, humanitarian you know, services and interventions in areas that are lacking or having you know, access you know, to support you know, from corporate citizens. The last but not the least, which currently is ongoing, you know, is a hybrid, you know, you know, corporate, you know, uh, workflow that we are trying to put in place. The foundation, you know, in line with, you know, Kanu, I mean, in line with Bayero University in Kanu, as well as the Halal Research Council in Pakistan, we are coming together to form a hybrid corporate, you know, workflow to establish what we call Jai's International Halal Certification. So. This is a full-fledged P&L company, that is profit and loss company. But whatever you know, income that comes in, in terms of you know, profits will be shared based on the equity contribution of the partners. And for us at Jai's Foundation, what comes to us are what we use to provide you know, the humanitarian services and interventions you know, for so many people, especially in the Northeast, 
that have been ravaged by the Boko Haram, you know, Menans, as well as people in the south, south and southeast of the country where we have the minority Muslims. So these avenues are open for us. And I can tell you also that, you know, there are other avenues that are yet to be tapped. And that is where the issue raised by, you know, our brother, Dr. Abdullahi you know, Soli is very, very germane. That where we have a robust legal framework that will give backing to the work of the workful, then we can be able to exploit the untapped you know, money, which is in the informal sector that we do not have access to today because of lack of public awareness in, among the people. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for the comprehensive answer. Uh, I two questions. I'll put them together and perhaps Dr. Ashur. Uh, Dr. Sheila can answer this. Which ministry is really in charge of Wakaf at state level in Nigeria? Uh, and a question related to that is, uh, considering the nature of Nigerian legal system, is the enactment of Wakaf law restricted to the northern states in Nigeria only? Well, thank you so much. Let me start from the rear. Going by what we have in the Nigerian Constitution of 1999 as amended, uh, there is a clause in the Constitution, particularly maybe in Section 272, you know, you know, that gives the states in the Federation. We have 36 states in the Federation plus the federal capital Abuja. The law gives all these states the, you know, the privilege, if they so wish, to establish the, a workful base, you know, institutional organizations. But like we all know, the northern part of the country, uh, after the, the 1999 you know, avalanche wave of the reawakening of Sharia, so many states in the northern part of the country then started you know, to put in place you know, state-based you know, commission. They call it you know, either you know, Zakat and uh, Wakfu you know, Commission, or they call it Zakat and Wakfu Board, or they call it Zakat and Hoops Commission in their various respective you know, regions. And that wave actually was like you know, a fire that caught up with so many states in the northern part of the country. But coming down to the southern part of the country, you know, where we have like you know, a balance of the two most prominent religions, that is Islam and Christianity, especially in the southern part of southwest Nigeria, where we have relatively Muslims and Christians you know, running apart. But in the south, south, and southeast, we have predominantly Christians. So in this part of the world, in, the, you know, in Nigeria, you know, we have not seen a state that has been able to muster the courage and the political will, you know, to come up with such that we have in the northern part. So that has left, you know, the Muslims in this part of the Nigeria, you know, behind in terms of the development, you know, of the workful, you know, institutions backed by, you know, respective state government. So that the provision is there in the constitution. And this can only see the light where there is a pressure group, where there is a very strong advocacy from the Muslim community with support from the northern part of the country to put pressure on the states, respective states, as in state of, uh, assembly to you know, bring about you know, an enactment of law that will give room you know, for such to, you know, to see the light of the day. But we don't have currently as we don't have. In all the southern part of the Nigeria, whatever we have there are driven by private organizations or individuals. Thank you very much. Uh, I know our focus is on Nigeria, but Zainu, there's a question from one of the delegates. Uh, what did the legislation say about Wakaf in South Africa and how can South Africa extend and help and work together with Nigeria? Okay, Bismillah rahman rahim I think uh, we, we have similar legal systems because South Africa and Nigeria were both British colonies. So the trust law is basically a fundamental law and, and South Africa doesn't have a work of law as such um, uh, and it's not recognized as, as, as a religious endowment. Although uh, we had instances in South Africa where mosques were going to be demolished because of a, a highway and because the Muslim community uh, objected to it and because the objections were raised on the grounds that these were sacred work of properties that roadway was actually halted. Uh, and th this happened in Port Elizabeth. We have all the documents related to that. Uh, so the trust law in South Africa, and as uh, I think uh, Dr. Shola mentioned, that uh, the trust law is basically 
coming from a worker flow, you know, fundamentally. So, so, so for us to actually uh, regard, uh, you know, and, and create a new law would not really be necessary because the trust law provides the uh, regulations and then you have a trust deed and the trust deed or the wakfiya would actually regulate your organization. And then you've got other laws like the tax laws and, uh, you know, non-profit organizations laws, all of that help to regulate. And I agree completely with uh, Dr. Umar Rafi's that the wakf sector should be civil society, not state. Uh, so state must they be there to regulate uh, and to oversee, but not to, not to create, not to manage, not to establish, uh, they can support and create an enabling environment. Uh, so in South Africa, I think there is an enabling environment uh, and, and similarly in Nigeria from, from what I'm hearing. Uh, but I think what, what needs to happen uh, is that uh, the, the awareness is something that is universal, even in Muslim countries that people are still, you know, because of the colonization and all of that, that, uh, you know, the, we, we've lost the sort of importance and value of the work of system uh, so that this education and awareness is something very, very important. And we should write, uh, we should actually uh, put in a lot of resources into education now. And then secondly, I think uh, the idea of community-based uh, work of institutions should also be established like the one in South Africa. And I think there may be other examples as well in Indonesia where funds are mobilized from the community. And these are not uh, managed by banks. These are managed by these institutions. So uh, we also have an example of uh, uh, these uh, cash workers being actually managed by banks, which again, I think uh, that this is happening in Malaysia. I think this is also where we need to be uh, very, very careful that uh, we build strong civil society organizations with excellent corporate governance that can manage uh, these funds. I think we have enough qualified people within the Muslim Ummah to be able to do this and not, not rely purely on the banking sector to provide, uh, uh, you know, the workup system. But I think, uh, I think that I'll conclude on that. Jazakallah. Jazakallah. Thank you very much, Brother Zainu. Uh, we have a couple of questions or plenty of questions, but we're running out of time. I'm going to just say one or two and then we have to conclude, inshallah. There's a question here directed to uh, Brother Madoki. You mentioned something about uh, digitizing in your presentation. Can you please elaborate a little bit more? Alhamdulillah, with the advent of uh, technology, uh, we can digitalize collection and also management of work. And this work can be collected anywhere and can also be managed anywhere. Some of what is uh, things that are happening in Pintara, in Kitimir, with so many uh, blockchain activities like we have seen in Kitabisa, uh, some part of Malaysia, some part of Indonesia, and some other part of the world like in the Euro, that opportunity can also be incorporated and deeply integrated into the issue of work management in terms of fundraising and also in terms of management. That is what I mean. Thank you. Jazakallah. Thank you very much. I'll conclude with this last question, inshallah. There are a few other questions which we are unable to get to, but because we've already exceeded our time. Dr. Ishola, uh, it seems like someone uh, from Nigeria is asking, how do cooperatives start their own wakaf? We also have a lot of demand for health support among members. How can we explore this? Alhamdulillah, thank you very much. And for the uh, Islamic Cooperative Society to start their own uh, wakaf, I have uh, designed uh, two models in my research. And uh, these models, we be internal and external. In the cooperative law in Nigeria, we have uh, provisions for welfare fund, which the law 
uh, expect even every cooperative society to always deduct for that uh, fund. So such fund can be internally uh, structured to be the workful for members of the cooperative. And even apart from that, within that cooperative, each cooperative can float their cash welfare fund by which each member will be required to contribute to that fund. So it's a very uh, technical and a very wide area which cannot be uh, exhaustively explained here. Then uh, the other question on incorporating workflow for health, the same thing applies. Like I said in my presentation, instead of all the organizations that uh, cater for the needs of people, so those who are in the health sector, who are concerned about the health sector, they can float a kind of a health workflow for the purpose of uh, assisting those who have uh, health uh, challenges. This should not be a problem. I've recommended that uh, there is what we call workful share uh, technique that can be explored. Rather than just asking people from time to time to donate, once you have the workful, you may target that you want to float a workful of uh, 100 million. And that 100 million will now be uh, I mean, shared, divided into units. You may now invite people to come and buy share as if they are incorporating into that company. So when they buy that share, that share may not be, you may say a unit is a 10,000 Naira. So for 100 million workful fund that you want to raise, you will know how many units that will be available. And once that unit is already covered, you will know you have the fund and you make use of that fund for that purpose instead of uh, asking people for money from time to time. Thank you. Thank you very much. And I think uh, someone already said that they're going to invite you. Perhaps you need to share your expertise to help some people establish these workers and make them sustainable uh, throughout uh, Nigeria, inshallah. Jazakallah, thank you very much uh, to all of our panelists. Inshallah. It brings us to the end. I want to uh, thank all of the panelists and delegates that have been uh, on this webinar. The fact that we still have so many unanswered questions, time doesn't permit, shows the large interest that people have in the work in Nigeria. Uh, we pray, inshallah, that Allah makes it easy for you, brothers, and the work you do there. May Allah give you strength to continue the good work and uh, accept you, inshallah. I also want to offer our thanks and, uh, to the supporting organizations, uh, the World OCAF Forum, OCAF South Africa, OCAF Organization of Nigeria, International Institute of Islamic Waqaf, uh, thank you very much to our CEO, Zainul, for OCAF South Africa, for facilitating this event. Uh, my thanks and appreciation also to all of our guests that have presented and our delegates who so diligently registered and patiently stayed right through this program and watching the number of participants. It hasn't dropped. People have joined us from the start uh, and have been with us right till the end. Again, thank you very much for your participation. I uh, also like to thank our technical team who worked tirelessly to put this project together, Brother Hasnain, Mikhail, Nazmi, and the uh, iSkills team at OCAF. Thank you very much to everybody. Uh, we'll conclude uh, with the recitation of Wal Asra, inshallah. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Wal Asra, inna l-insan, 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 inna Jazakallah, thank you very much. Allah bless you all and take you from strength to strength and keep you well. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.